Hi. Ciao. Hello everyone. Ciao a tutti. Good afternoon and welcome in Finland. Buonasera e benvenuti in Finlandia. I'm Mirja. Io sono Mirja. And today I'm your happiness guide here in Finland. You can spend some time with me. I will tell you about the happiness in Finland. Finland is officially the happiest country in the world. There's many reasons behind that. And I will tell you some of them. The things that make me happy and find my calmness. First, I'm going to tell you something about my one of my favorite things. It's cycling. Then we are going to have a short walk here in this forest. And in the end, we do some crafting because it's very typical for us Finns. And that's not all. We, you, we have also another happiness guide, Molla Mills, and we are going to do some croqueting with her. So I wish you have a hook. I had one. I almost miss it. Yeah, hook and yarn. Molla will teach us some croqueting. And I heard that also some finis. It would be very exciting. The croqueting pattern she's teaching us is called Tähkä. It's also very Finnish and very beautiful. But now I will tell you something about the cycling. We Finns cycle a lot. Actually, this morning I heard from Ule News that this spring we, that, that we have been buying more than 50% more than usually the new bicycles. I started cycling when I was about five. It's quite typical uh, age. But nowadays they used to do that even when they are two years old. Do you know those kick bikes? The bikes without pedals. And children are ped uh, kicking and cycling with the parents all around. It's amazing to see the whole families to cycle. When I was a kid, cycling for me, I was cycling just for fun. It was a new skill to learn. When I was a teenager, it had no other meaning. It was freedom. I could go wherever and whenever. I wasn't born here in Helsinki and we didn't have so good public transport in the place where I was. But cycling was the way to go out meet friends, as I told you, whenever and wherever. Now, when I'm adult, cycling means a lot of more for me. First, it's commuting. I'm cycling everywhere, all the year round, to the work, to shopping, to theater. It's also welfare, it's my social life, and the way to see new places. I've been cycling with this, my bicycle, one of them. She's Kameli Camel, because she's bringing me all around Europe. I've been cycling with her from Helsinki to Belgium and also from Helsinki to Italy. I would like to know if, do you have a cycle or can you cycle? Because it's not so typical in every country that all people can cycle. Can you tell them, what if you don't have your own bike? Oh, you can have to have a rental bike. For example, for vis visitors, uh, there's many possibilities to have a cycle in Finland. You can have a rental bike and you, we have also a very good town bike system in many towns. In Helsinki, I think more than 10 towns in Finland has nowadays these city, bu city bikes. And you can rent whatever bike you like. You can rent a uh, mountain bike, fat bike, gravel bike, road bike, an ordinary bicycle, whatever you need. And we have a lot of nice roads to cycle all around in Finland. You can cycle in nature or on the roads, small roads. They are very beautiful. And do you have anything to ask about cycling or something you want to tell me? 
what is your favorite kind of bike or where do you like to bike? If roads or something. Oh, I like to bike more, the small roads. That's the best I know, gravel. And this is my favorite bike. I'm very keen on her, as I told you, because we have been cycling a lot together. I also have that Yopo bicycle at home, a very special Finnish bicycle for chilling and a short, short, if you are going shopping and go just cycling around your own area. You should check from Google Yopo, G-O-P-O. -O. It's a very special one. And actually this spring, these three gear Jopos are already sold out. They are so popular here in Finland. So that's about cycling. It's a good way to do out to, 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 to be out. And now we are going to do a short walk in the forest. We do it my way. Some people call it sensory walk because we are going to use our all five senses, one by one. The idea behind the sensory walk is that we concentrate and we see and notice all the small things around us. All the things that can make us happy. So if you are now sitting somewhere, I ask you to stand up. You can't walk if you are sitting. You can do this wherever you are, at your home, or if you have a park near your house, go there. Actually, last February I did this in some museums in Italy. It helps me to concentrate on the place where I am. So please stand up and first try to reach the sky. It feels good. And when we take our first steps, we do it very slowly. This is our private time. This is your private time. You can take this just to relax. And now feel the ground or the floor under your feet. Walk slowly. I'm quite happy I can do this here in this forest. Have you been ever in Finland or in Finnish forest? This amazing place. This is quite soft. Did you know that more than 70% of, of Finland's area is forest? So it's no wonder that forest means a lot for Finns. It's both income and welfare. And first of all, for me, it's a place where I can escape noise and stress if I have it. Actually, as a teacher, I made you something special. I talk about cycling and I want to show you that cycling and forest has a lot of similarities. They both help you to escape noise. It gives you your personal time and your personal space. It lifts the mood and it reduces many negative feelings you may have. Anger, fear, anxiety, whatever you have. And it reduces stress and your blood pressure. It reduces your heart rate and muscle tension. And also it helps you to produce many, many good stress hormones. 
So no wonder that just being here in the forest makes you feel so good. Julia. How often do you enjoy being in forest or oh. do these sensory walks? Hmm. I cycle every day, but I should say that I don't visit forest every day. Even the nearest forest is about 200 meters from, our, from my house. It's quite typical in Finland. But I visit many times a week the forest. And as I told you, I also do sensory work in other places. I can do that in a supermarket. If I'm there shopping and suddenly I feel that this is not place for me, I can do some exercises there. It helps me to concentrate and keeps me calm. And now we can start, I think we can start with our ears. I can listen, I can listen and I can hear something that makes me smile, something that makes me happy. And it helps if you close your eyes. We are so visual persons and we get all the time so much visual stimulus that it helps us to concentrate on hearing if we close our uh, eyes. You can listen maybe the same what I'm hearing now or you can listen what you hear in your house if you are there. You can open the window and now have a moment just listening. This is so amazing way to be happy without doing nothing. It's amazing to hear these birds here. Children walking over there. And I can hear they are quite happy. Try this. Wherever you are, just listen what you can hear around you. For me, the forest is the best place, but maybe you enjoy other kind of places. I could stand here an hour. Yeah. Does this make you happy? How can you benefit from this kind of exercise? Uh, it makes me happy. Yeah. It makes me happy. And when you are happy, you feel fine. And it makes also, it's not only your mental health, but it also makes your physical happy, uh, physically very good. Oh, I could, st as I told you, I could stand. <laughs> all the time here just listening to the birds and this surrounding forest is so amazing place but then we can also use some other senses maybe we can smell i'm here in forest and it's easy for me to try things to smell if you are in your home you can surprise yourself take some very ordinary things from your house and check how they are smelling. You may surprise because every piece has a specific smell. Just the air. And it also helps you if you close your eyes so you don't get visual stimulus. Even if it's so beautiful here in the forest, just concentrate on smelling things around you.
I smell. I smell. I smell with my nose. And I can smell something that makes me smile. I smell something that makes me happy. This is funny if you do this in the supermarket. Hmm. Moss. Then we go. Oh, we can find blueberries here. Now they are flowering, but on June you will have here amazing blueberries just to pick up and eat. Also the flowers are quite sweet. And strawberries will be there. Mm. What can you make out of the berries? Whoa, whatever. I love them fresh, to eat them fresh. But especially, it's so typical to bake blueberry pie. That's amazing. Smoothies, blueberry pie, whatever. Actually, I have done risotto con mirtilli. Blueberry risotto. That's also quite good. <laughs> And lingonberries will we also have here. Hmm. Oh, and the lily of the valley. This is a national flower of Finland. I think it takes some weeks to, and then we have beautiful white flowers here and the smell is amazing. It's really amazing. Finnish summer is so beautiful. It's so short and everything in the nature is growing so quickly. They must, because the winter is coming so soon. The growing period is short and it's amazing. Every year I wonder how everything is coming up here after the winter. Lily of the Valley. My grandmother loved that. She had a perfume of that and that wasn't good. I didn't like that. It was totally too strong. Okay, now we can't smell that. But after some weeks, we could do. But maybe we now have an exercise with our skin. And we can feel something with the cheek. So if you are there at home, Maybe you can open the window if you don't already have opened that. And you can feel what is the temperature outside. Is it different from the room you are? Warmer or colder? Is there any wind? Here I can feel how the forest gives us Oh, it covers us. When it's warm, it keeps us cold. When it's cold, it keeps us warm. I just to change my position and I can feel it. I can feel the sun in my skin. And I can feel a lot of things with my hands. Try to find from your place, wherever you are, now something very smooth, something very smooth. What could it be here? 
maybe this leaf. Oh yes. This makes me smile. Did you find something smooth? Something rough. What could it be? A knot? A baby knot. It's small, but it's very strong. It's rough. It's rough, but it feels good. It makes me smile. It makes me happy. Can you find something cold? What could be cold here? Hmm. I think the coldest thing right now here is the wind. It's not very windy, it's w but still, it's the coldest thing here. It's amazing to feel the wind with your skin. And then something warm. Sun. Finnish summer. It's amazing time. I love this sun. I love summer. I love the white nice. If I wouldn't be a Finn, I would visit here. I would have a cycle tower here. And I would do it so that I would cycle during the white nights and I would sleep during the days. White nights, they are amazing. Oh. And then we could concentrate on our eyes. We could watch. And usually we are thinking if we can see something beautiful, but I do it different way. Try to find what is the smallest thing what you can see, wherever you are. The smallest thing. Oh, what could it be? I think it's some kind of some stick or Formica and I can't see any ants here. Havuneulanen. These are nice. I think there are small ones here. Maybe the smallest thing I can find is some kind of neulanen. I don't know what this is in English or in Italian, hmm. but you know what I mean. What is the smallest thing in your house where you are now? I wonder. And then you can guess the opposite. What is the biggest thing you can see here? These trees. We have a great question here in Facebook. And someone is asking that, can you do sensory walks in the winter? Can you enjoy the forest in, during winter? Of course, whenever, all the year round. And actually, <laughs> Finnish forest is an amazing place because every season has something special. In autumn, you, the leaves, leaves have amazing color and the smell is amazing in, the, in autumn. And winter time, it's you can walk in the forest and if there is a lot of snow you can ski in the forest but also and you can also cycle in the paths in in the winter time and this is very good to do also in winter time oh in winter time but I, we will talk about that later yeah <laughs> i'm not telling you everything right now winter is good time to do this also and now we have spring the beginning of the summer every season has the own own species here in our forest. I love the four seasons we have. 
So, and the biggest thing, yeah, there are those pines here. I think these are quite old. Very beautiful. And then concentrate on the color. What is the color, the main color here you see? Or in your house, in your place, wherever you are. Right now, here, it's green. But in autumn, this is changing. It's happened something magical. The colors are changing. No green anymore, but red, yellow, orange, all the colors from the palette. And in winter time, I wish it would be white. We'll see. Of course, we always have green moss here. Uh, someone is asking that where is this video taken? Where, where are we now? Oh yeah, we are in Helsinki actually. We are in North East Helsinki in Tapanila. This is about, I think, about 15 kilometers from the city center, from the downtown. And it's typical in Helsinki that in everywhere we have small forests. It's so important for Finns that we have small forest areas all around the city. And not only here in Helsinki. As I told you, 70% of Finland is forest. <laughs> so we were looking and we were thinking that the green is a color here, but can you find some other colors here? Some strong colors, red, yellow or blue. My rucksack, Zaino, is red. It's waiting for me, but it's not from the nature. Light red or purple, almost purple, we can find from the blueberry flowers here. So beautiful. And I saw there is one viola. Cosa questo in English? Viola in Italiano? Violet. But as you see, mostly green. So. You can see when you are using your senses one by one. You can feel more, you can see more, you can hear more. And as I told you, you can do this everywhere, wherever you are. When you need to concentrate, you need to call calm. But now I think we can go further. Here I have my camp. I brought here some equipment ready for you because this is not so long time to spend together. I could stay here for hours, but we have now only this one moment to be together. I never go to the forest without coffee. I have here in my rucksack my thermos and my coffee and I think that because we are going to crock it with molla you could also cook some coffee or tea if it's possible and just enjoy and stay with us. I'm going to do some craft with you. Craft, crafting is something Finns are doing a lot. You can imagine the opposite of this very light summer time. It's a dark winter time. And even we are going out and doing outdoor life during the winter time, then we have more time to crafting, but we are crafting all the time and everywhere. And today we are going to do something very ordinary, something very easy, but something very special and important. Um, I have here 
an old milk carton. And a coffee can. Ratings to Carraro. <laughs> and we are going to build uh, an insect hotel. Do you know what is? Insect hotel is a place where insects can go. Pollinators has problems because they need old wood where they can stay and if pollinators are leaving us they are taking us with them. They are very important and we are doing some shelter for pollinators and we are using only recycling materials and na nature materials and I have collected things around here everything I found a little bit beforehand and the main idea for this insect hotel is the holes. Insect needs holes where they can go, they can have their nest there and they can, can stay there during the winter times. Of course different kind of holes, it depends what kind of insects you have in your area. And the problem is that in many places there is no more old wood where they can find holes. So we will make them holes. We have beautiful gardens here, but we have a habit that we cut the grass too much. We have flowers, but we don't have shelter for the inches. Milk can. I will cut a little bit away so that if it's raining everything doesn't become wet. And then I just start to fill it with the things where the insects can go and to make holes I have also some oh this is beautiful I love this this is from birch do you know what is duohi in English I don't know the word but you know the cover never take this from the tree just collect them from the ground that's the point and I can do Maybe I first should fill this little bit. This is so big. I drink a lot of milk with my coffee and this is why we buy big milk cans. Knots. Where did you learn to do all this? Um, I don't know. Maybe I have just read articles and actually hey I have I have done this for a long time, but right now, this spring, Yle's Radio in Finland, they are also sending a lot of programs and telling people to do this kind of inject hotels in their gardens and homes. Moss is amazing material. Yes, they can do their own holes here. I put some moss here. Moss, knots, old wood, and then I will do this. Oh! This is a treasure. <laughs> Look what I found. It was it has been a bird nest. I didn't take it from the tree, no, but it was fallen down and I took it with me because this is amazing material for the insect hotel. As you see, the forest is full of treasures. Just have a walk and pick up things. And small holes for different holes for different types of inches. Some pieces of wood. Hi. 
How do you like it? Yeah. Then we can hang it to the tree, put it in the garden, and maybe someone will find a place to stay. And we can also easily change this from Inject Hotel to the BBB. Oh, but I tell about later, Julia. Uh, does, do many Finns do this? Nowadays, yes. Also at school, this is quite popular to do. And I think Finns are doing this more and more. People do this themselves and they are buying these all also from the shops and putting them to the gardens. But I think we are doing this more and more ourselves. Oh, look what I found. This is nice. I put this here. And now I change this into the bed and breakfast, so they would need something to eat. But it's not a lot here, things to eat, but maybe some blueberry flowers, yeah. Now this is bed and breakfast. You can also do it to the tin can, if you like. So, nature is taking care of us. And it's very important that we are taking care of the nature. This one I did yesterday in my house. I'm recycling my old lantern. And then I think we did the sensory walk and we were listening. We were looking around. We were touching and feeling the things and we were... What else did we? But we have one thing we haven't done. Do you know what? We haven't been tasting things. In Finland it's amazing that you can pick up everything from the nature. You can pick up berries, mushrooms, and it doesn't matter who is the owner of the forest. Everything is free for everyone. My Italian friends are wondering that can you pick up as much mushrooms as you can? Yes, and it's free. And it's for everyone not only for us Finns. I am very proud of that. And um, we could taste things here. In this forest there is not my favorite um, herbs to eat. Pisicani in Italia. I don't want to translate the word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Have you been eating flowers? You just must be sure that they are not poison. Is there anything good you can chase in your home? Something. Oh, this is strong. The flower is better. And then, hey, I had my coffee. Did you know that Finns use most coffee per habitat in the world? Maybe it's one reason why we are so happy. We can smell it, we can taste it, and we can feel the warm coffee in our mouth. And then I never go to the forest without korvapuusti. That's something very, very Finnish. It looks like an ordinary cinnamon roll, but it isn't. This is something you should be able to taste once in your lifetime. Now, Imagine the smell and the taste when you have a 
bun made from milk with butter, sugar, a little bit more butter, cinnamon and butter and a little bit more sugar. I've been eating korvapusti more than 50 years and it's always, every time, so good. I'm sure that this is one reason for Finnish happiness. As I told you, this is not an ordinary cinnamon roll, no. You can check from Google, I'm quite sure you find from YouTube or other places the recipe for korvapusti. Is it so that our time starts to be over? It goes so quickly, I told you. If you go to the forest, you can <laughs> spend here hours. In Finland, we, when we are walking together, when I'm here in the forest with my friend, we are just sitting, we are not talking to each other. We Finns love silence and we can find that from the forest. We can just sit here, have a coffee and enjoy. How do you feel now? Um, do you feel happy? Can't you see that? Mm, <laughs> yeah. Yes, I can. I'm really happy and I'm so happy that you were here with me. It would be nice to see you here in Finland. Who knows if you come here one day. I'm staying now here in the forest, but you can go and meet my friend Molla. And as I told you, she's teaching us some croqueting. That will be interesting. We will see later. We will meet. I, I'm going coming to visit Mola's place and we can talk together if you have something to ask or something to tell. And then you can also book a private session with me. We can chat together later. You can find that from just check Rentafin and you will find the place where you can book private time with me. Are you ready? I think now you should cook some coffee or tea or whatever you like and take your croqueting hook ready and also some yarn. I also took some with me. I wish I could do that with Molla. But now I first take my coffee break. It's time to say goodbye. Arrivederci. I had a nice time. I always have nice time in the forest. I enjoy this and this is a special time that I could share this all with you. Ciao. Alla prossima.
Moi! My name is Mola Mills and uh, I'm your next virtual happiness guide. So you went to the forest with Miria and you, we are just coming back from there and we are actually visiting my tiny work studio at the moment. Um, so this project, what we are doing, is a uh, part of um, um, our Finland, which is a tourism office. And we, this project is called Rentafin. So since the current situation is what it is, we are doing this online. Normally, I would invite you all here. Well, my studio is pretty small, but normally you would be here. We would be talking face to face. But since we are, we are here, we're doing this online. And as you might notice, this is all improvised. So, so. I'll be here with you for the next hour about. I'll be talking talking to you about um, one type of Finnish happiness, which is hand making. So earlier in this uh, Rentafin pro pro podcast program, you went to sauna. And sauna is something that is so typical for a Finn. I think every Finn has like at least two saunas or something. It's, uh, it's like our natural um, spa, in a way, we always go to sauna. So in the first episode, you've been there. And in the second episode with Miria and myself, you went to forest and you were doing these um, buck hotels. Did you see how Miria did it? Actually, my mom is making those same type of hotels and today, I, I, I mean, last week I visited my mom and I, I took a look at those hotels and, you know, they were all booked. I was pretty excited to see how it, how it goes. So you were crafting with Miria and, and later on today I'll show you some crafts as well. I have something on my work table, something very typically Finnish, so we will be, we'll be making something together in a while. But first, I wanted to introduce myself a bit better and to tell you about tell you about my work. So as as oh, so we have a we have a small team here and they are arriving and my, my floors are creaking so don't worry about the sounds you are hearing. So we are doing this uh, this program for you with a small team and today we are here in my Helsinki studio. So the studio is located in an old house. We're actually inside of an old school from 1920s. And uh, it's pretty nice to be here. As you see, I have quite a lot of yarn. So my work is related to yarn. Uh, I write books about crochet and I teach. I've been teaching some years, maybe like, I don't know, 10, 10 years about. I teach workshops all over the world for you how to how to do crochet, like really basic stitches what we're gonna be making today as well. But how I how I found my happiness, what makes what makes um my my happiness real and why I want to talk about it for you, it's simple. So when you do crafts, your mind is focused and you are right there. Your stress levels go down and your mind is, maybe you're finding some balance in it, I think, at least, at least I find. Even though I've been doing this for my living for long enough to, to, want, to want to change the career, but I still want to do this and I love teaching and I would love to meet you face to face. I don't know where you are. It would be so nice to know where you are watching this. As we are here in this tiny studio, but you might be anywhere in the world. So that's pretty exciting. So later on, we will also have Instagram Live, by the way. So you can send me questions and you can send me questions any, like all the time if you want. So, so what I do for my living is books. Here is one of my, here is one of my um, crochet books. This is, as you can see, in Korean. I have no idea what it says. All I can understand are the numbers. So I've been writing books since uh, 2011. And uh, how I started, well, first of all, how I, how I started building my life with, uh, with this DIY style. I come from a family of crafters. So my mom, 
I think at the moment she's doing macrame, but she's been doing like all the possible crafts you can imagine. She's making soap and we have a house full of soap. Um, she's making a lot of um, different types of crafts. And my dad, he's a carpenter. I will show you a picture of my dad later on. He, is, he was modeling for one of my books. But so I, come, I come from a family of hardcore crafters and I got it as well. So, so I do crafts all the time, 24 seven. Well, maybe not 24 seven, but you know, I've been doing this since I was a very little girl. So for me, this what you see here is like a base of a base of my happiness. I always feel really calm and relaxed when I have yarn in my hands and um, I get really inspired by all kinds of like new new textures. Here I have something from um, from Chile. I went to visit uh, north of Chile a place called Iquique and I got this this uh, alpaca yarn from there and this is made by Aymara tribe. So I, I, I get excited when I touch touch materials. Maybe that's the same with you as well if you do any crafts. It doesn't have to be crochet or like any kind of yarn related work. You just get like inspired when you when you when you sense that, that this is your material. Mine I, I thought mine would be wood. I actually I have some some wood stuff here I want to show you. Something is coming out as well. So sometimes I instead of a crochet hook I take a knife and I start uh, whittling some crochet hooks. Sometimes we do some works with my dad and it's, it's always so nice. So, so I think we have about 45 minutes so you can also send me questions like any time so I'm just like blabbering about my work. <laughs> All right I was I was basically talking I started talking about about my my books but I also wanted to tell you how I started. Um, so, so my story as, as, a, as a craft book author started when I was, I was already like 30 plus something. I was in a university, I was doing my master's degree in art. So I was, you know, I always had my work. When it was like lectures, any kind of studies. I always had my work like under the table. The teacher was saying something and I was like, mm-hmm, nah -hmm, yeah, yep. Yeah. I always had my hands on work. So for me, it was like a natural way of learning. And I think it's, it's also like they, they did some research as well about like manual learning. So you have, you have something in your hands while you, you, while you listen to something. So you kind of, you kind of, the information kind of like, I don't know how to say it, but you just, you just, you just soak into the information a lot better when you have something in your hands. And I think this is really exciting because when I went to school, my teacher was always like, no craft here. So I was always trying to, you know, keep my hands busy so that I could, so my mind wouldn't start traveling. So I would be focused when I have my hands on work, you know, it's a funny thing. But now I do it for my living and I always want to encourage people to, you know, if you want to, if, if you have restless hands or if your mind is wandering, I think it's really nice to have something in your hands that you just, you know, focus. You can focus differently with your hands and with your mind. So, yeah. So, so about my, about my, about my books, how I started, I think I went quite far from the topic. So I was in a university and I was always doing this under the table. And it took a while when my teacher Beza, he noticed that damn, she's always, she's always doing that. So he basically, he, he approached me. It was, I think we were in the middle of some project and he was, he came to me and he was like, Mala, don't you think you could do something, you know, bigger with this crochet? I was thinking like, well, it's kind of my hobby. I don't know if I'm able to take it to the next level. It's always been my hobby. So I started thinking when Vesa was kind of inspiring me to, to think outside of my yarn box, you know. So, so because Vesa was like, he was, he put this seed in my mind that I could do something bigger with this tiny skill of mine. Back then I thought it's just like a tiny skill or a tiny hobby. 
So I started, I started slowly thinking, what could it be? What could I do with it? And then I started like, I started crocheting with thicker yarns, with, with bigger projects. And eventually, eventually um, I graduated and I made my first book as my thesis. So it was, it all started because one person was encouraging me to, uh, to step outside and look, look at your, your skills from outside. He saw that in me. So, so I don't know, Vesa, if you are there, thank you. <laughs> so it's awesome. And this is how I love, this is the, when I teach, I always try to encourage as well that it's, it's not only handicraft what we do, it's not only crochet. There's been a lot of people who actually ask like, so what do you do for real? Like, what's your real professional? Like, what, what, what do you mean? Am I supposed to do something else? This actually consumes my, my whole time. I'm just, I'm just crafting. And nowadays I'm really proud that I'm only crafting, but I'm taking th this to the next level. So I'm writing my sixth book. I have 11 uh, translations. So this became my work. Um, it started as my small hobby and then it just, then it just grew bigger and bigger. And now, well, this is, this is, this is me. So I think it's, it's pretty exciting and I'm pretty happy to be here talking about my, about my craft for you as well. So what I do as well, I travel, I travel a lot for the last five years. I've been, I've been mostly on the road. So I left. After I made my book number three, it's, it looks like this. It's pretty awesome. I'll, so I'll show you some pictures from inside later on. So after I, after I finished the book, I was a little bit stressed out. I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. And I, I thought like, it's now or never. So what I did, I gave all my belongings to a recycling center. And I, I, I packed my backpack and I went to India. So I started my, I could say that I kind of started my, my second career when I took this step and that I, I left, I moved to Berlin, I wrote some more books and I'm still, I'm still kind of like on the same path, you know, once when you get out, once when you see what's out there, I feel like we hardly ever want to go back to the, uh, to the old self. Um, and when I left, I left Finland five years ago. Well, now I'm here. But when I when I started looking around, I also saw my homeland with uh, with completely different eyes. You know how what, what they always said that you have to go really far to see yourself from like to see the, the, the important things close to you. So the same thing happened to me as well. I still love traveling and I, it's so really important for me to go and see it and feel other cultures. And uh, when I design my new patterns, they're always inspired by other, other cultures, other countries. And uh, I think my works as well, they got like uh, to an, a new level color wise. I started using instead of black and white, which was always like my trademark, I started using colors. And that was so exciting. You know, once when you go to India, you are like surrounded with smells, colors, and everything like the air is different. The people are different and you, you are different when you're there. But yet when I came, when I was in India, I did something black and white. I, I think I still couldn't get out of my, my black and white box. I'll show you a little bit of patterns that I've made during my travels, if you, if you want to see. So, so, I don't know. I've been a little bit everywhere. I, I do have a favorite place. I love Latin America. I, I spent like about a year traveling all over in Latin America. And I have to say that I don't really speak Spanish. I understand it a little bit, but I don't really speak it yet. I manage there. I, I, I always come back in one piece and I always make friends and I always manage to teach. And people are wondering like, how can, how do you go there when you don't speak any Spanish? And I'm like, you just need to go. You don't have to think, just go. I always try to tell that to everybody. Like there is like, in, it's the same like in crafts. There is no rules. There's no limits. I, I teach crochet. So our tool is as simple as this. 
maybe maybe I'll show you a little bit bigger so you see that this one here. Simple tools, no rules. That's like that's the whole logic in in crafts. You can express yourself freely, and I think when it comes to crafting, that's the whole idea. Like exp self expression, you can put yourself on the canvas, so called. You can you can you can create art with simple tools and yarn. So I wanted to show you a little bit of the of the of the patterns that I've made here and there. So this one was in India. You may notice that it's inspired by floor tiles. Right. This is something every time when I travel I get my eyes there. I get my eyes there. I take a look around. What colors do I see? What combinations do I see? But yet the most in inspiring are always the floor. What kind of floor tiles do they have in Portugal? What kind of floor tiles do they have here and there? So I take a lot of pictures like this. <laughs> it's a bit funny. So, so India was here. Then we have, do you guess where, where they use a lot of turquoise color? This is in Mexico. So I just came back from Mexico and I, I, I love that place. I love the colors. And there is basically no black and white there. Everything is colorful. Everything is full of, full of amazing rich colors. I always try to bring some of them here with me. And, it, and uh, well, I hope, I hope it shows, even though I collected a little bit like harmonic color pattern here on my table today, you know, yellow and, and white. Anyway, anyway, this one here, it's a really, really tiny work. This is a pineapple. And this one I made in Costa Rica, maybe because we were eating a lot of a lot of pineapple there. But it's also that Costa Rica was warm. It was like we were in the Caribbean coast side. It was just beautiful. Blue skies, pineapples. This is this is a lemon. One of my favorite favorite patterns. People always want to do the lemons. <laughs> what inspires you in Finland? In Finland? Yes. I think do you we have any patterns from Finland? I do. And I was actually coming there in a while. I have my all-time favorite pattern here. And that is inspired by my, my hometown Kurikka. So I'll show you. I'll show you quickly. Maybe these ones were made in Chile. I, I'm just going to throw them there. But this you may know. This was inspired by Frida Kahlo in Mexico. And here we get something that is so Finnish. This is a... This is a smile. I always, always hope people would smile some more and I try to smile. And you know, it's always so funny when you smile at a random person, they always smile back at you. Sometimes maybe they think that it's a bit creepy, but I think it's always so cool. I think it's always so cool. So let me see. There was something very finished. I actually, I just, I just happened to collect like you know Patagonia inspired pattern like Mapuche style in full respect of Mapuche culture but here this this is called Pohjanma so Pohjanma is the place where I'm from Kurikka my hometown is in the south part of Pohjanma and this one here it's kind of old I've been using I've been wearing it everywhere I call it my travel traveling bag so I travel to places and I take pictures with Pohjanma baggers. Then I can always take my home with me when I when I go to places. So if you know anything about Pohjanma area, we have this like traditional symbol, salmiakki. Salmiakki is also a Finnish candy. I don't know if you ever tasted it. Some people once tasted it and never again. But for us, it's like it's like delicacy. So salmiakki is like super salty hard like um i don't i don't know how to i don't know how to how to describe describe it but it's just like black candy so this this shape here is salmiakki you can also find salmiakki in our um traditional sweater so it's it's like in the yoke here you can knit it or you can buy them ready made so it goes like the pattern goes here and it's with the same salmiakki symbol I kind of, I, I, I like it so much and I wanted to bring it to this work. And the pattern is actually here in my book number two. This happens to be exactly the same bag even. So it's old. Yeah. Do you have any other Finnish words you would like to teach the viewers? 
I do. I do. I, I wrote like I wrote myself a, a list of everything what I wanted to say. But uh, so when I when I when I travel, there are always some people. It doesn't matter the place or the time. There are always some people who know something about Finland. Most of them don't know any words. But everybody, everybody tends to know where Finland is located. Oh, it's cold there. Yes, it is cold here. Even now my hands are frozen. It's pretty cold here. We do have a beautiful summer. So in the summertime, about like, it's somewhere like in, like in the middle of the year, in the end of June, in the end of next month. When basically the belief is that this is where summer begins. And in Finnish, the, the time is called Yötön yö, Johannus, midsummer, and Yötön yö, we have the, the letter O with those dots on top of it, so we, it's Ö. For some people it's really hard to pronounce, but for, for us Finns we are, we are we're used to these strange words. So we pronounce it Yötön yö, the nightless night. I like to call it 30 days of night in a way, even though it's just like a couple of nights. So how, how I describe Finnish summer for, for foreigners when I travel, I always say that we have this particular time of the year where the sun doesn't set. So you can just see the horizon is here and the sun goes like this. It's like swimming in the horizon. It doesn't really go down. So it brings this beautiful yellow light and it's, I think that's, that's the most romantic time of the year. <laughs> Does this inspire you? The nightless nights, the Finnish nature? The Finnish nature, definitely. So I grew up basically in the middle of forests and fields and I always love it. I, my mind always returns to this kind of environment. I'm, I'm anything but a city girl. So, so the Finnish nature does inspire me. Like this one here, it's very much inspired by our country. I have a tiny, tiny um, like a real life sample for you, what we are going to be crocheting today. So this in Finnish, this is called Tähkä. And Tähkä is like, I don't know what this is like. Does it have like a particular English word? I think it's just called ear of the wheat or something like the top part of any kind of wheat. I think this is like oats, um, I guess. We just call it Tähkä. So this is what this is. This was definitely inspired by by my country. I have another pattern. This one here is called Hilla. My brother's uh, daughter is also called Hilla. Hilla is a cloudberry. This grows in the in the lap lapish uh, swamp swampland. I don't know if it's called well swamp like really moist places. You can find you can find um, Hilla, and Hilla is like it's it's a delicacy. You can buy it only in certain time of the year. Not so many people like the taste of it. Like I'm, I'm one of them. Hila, Hila is not my favorite berry, but it's so super healthy. So we consider Hila as um, superfood. We have a lot of other berries as well, but I don't have them here crusades. So would you like to see some of the stitches? Are we there? We are there. So normally, normally I, I, I travel and I teach and I have uh, my workshops are usually three hours long, plus one hour when we just blabber and you know, sometimes we just we, we go to a bar after after the work workshop and get to know to each other. For me as a teacher, it's always important to get to know to my students really well as uh, as well. I mean, I'm telling a lot about myself, but we never during the workshop we hardly ever have time to get to know to 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 each other, unless the group is like really small. But here, I hope there is a lot of you listening to this. So um, I will be teaching now, um, I don't know, a 20 minutes, 15 minutes, like um, online workshop. How do we do this? So because of the, because of the current situation, my workshops also got cancelled and there has been a lot of requests for online workshops. Unfortunately, I'm not so technical person myself. So I can I can I can barely use like you know cell phone. I I don't think I can I can throw any more online workshops than this one. So it's really special one for me and for you. I hope. So we have a tiny uh, camera crew here. We have another camera 
So you're gonna be you're gonna be filming my fingers while I do this. And please tell me if you don't if it's too far, too close to something, and I'll I'll show you the stitches. Are we ready? We are ready. I'm just gonna move these a little bit so you can see better. So first of all, I wanted to tell you a little bit of the of the uh, design process. So. How do I design my patterns? I have a lot of patterns and I all the time create some more. So usually first I choose a theme and in this, in the, this was the, the theme was Finland, the nature. I can, usually, I can usually choose the theme myself and it was like, it was, it was kind of natural to choose something related to my country. Um, but this was not, this was not the first, um, prototype of the work. Usually the process takes long. Even if you just design one pattern, it might take two weeks. But I think this case was more like, I don't know, one week. So, so when, I, when, I when I start designing a new pattern, I usually, I collect a lot of images on that, on that well, if there is something uh, like a particular shape. In this case, we had tähkä. And I knew how Tähkä looks like. But anyway, I had to make some, some prototypes, some samples to, uh, to make it... Um, how, do, how do you say? Uh, when, if I teach this, you need, to, you need to be able to make it. So my first pattern looked like this. And these, these stitches here were so complicated that I don't think I could have... I could have been able to to uh, explain how do you do that? Because so you had to like you had to like twist the yarn around the hook and you had to pull it through the one first first loop and then da 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 da. It was like way too complicated and the pattern one sentence would have been like trut, super long. So so this one I threw it away. I mean not like literally, but but I skipped this pattern and I had to simplify it. And the simplified version now looks like this. If you want to make the pattern at home, you can find this pattern in English in rentafin.com website. I don't know how long it will be there, so go there, print it, so you can, you can make it as well. It's simple. So the stitches we are using here, it's called double crochet stitch. Since we, we, we have different terminology in, in Britain and in America, I think I'm using the American, I always call it double stitch. In Spanish, punto alto. In Argentinian Spanish, they want to call it vareta. <laughs> I love the word. When I went to Argentina and I heard this is vareta, I, I, I think it's so Finnish. I, I think we could have something called vareta. So vareta, vareta, punto alto, double stitch. That's the, that's the basic stitch what we are. We are creating the whole work with the same stitch. And the idea of tapestry crochet, tapestry crochet is multicolor texture. We are using two yarns. And if you take a look at the work inside, there is no yarn loops whatsoever. So what you do, you carry the yarn inside of the stitch from the beginning all the way to the end. So we are here. Now my team here is, is all the time like checking that I'm not talking too much. Am I talking too much? Am I going over time? <laughs> But I think we still have some time to, 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 to make a few stitches together. So how you work, how you, how you start the work when you have multiple yarns is that you have them all. I'm, I'm right-handed as you can see. So I hold the work and the hook with my, with my right hand and I hold the yarns with my, with, with my left hand. I always hold all of the yarns here between my fingers like this. I squeeze them. I split the yarns with my index finger and I start the work. To do, to, to make vareta, punto alto, um, double stitch. Oh, and finish this is called pulvas. So when you do pulvas, you take one yarn over and you put the hook through the next stitch. I've already done this. It's, it, this, uh, this took me maybe like three evenings when I was, when I, st I started from the, from the bottom and I went here I've made, I've, I've made like a few of these works. So this sample took me about three evenings, maybe like, I don't know, six hours, six, seven hours with really slow crochet. And you know, that's one of the things in crochet can be really slow. Is it hard if you are a beginner? 
Well, yes and no. It depends. It depends if you have any hand skills. Um, usually, I have a lot of beginners in my workshops who do this. We can. We sometimes we even have like three different yarns. And the, and the beginners and advanced are always really good in that. I try to teach everybody like pers individually, personally, how do you say, so that I have time with each student to make sure that the stitches are going correctly. And um, yeah, everybody usually managed to make a really nice work. There's been maybe one student who actually gave up and, you know, threw the work away, but just one, just one. It didn't happen too often. This is always a lot of fun to do. Like. I guess now when the th when the theme of of this whole whole program is happiness, I don't know. There is this is like pure happiness. Everybody who comes to the workshop, they always come with a smile and leave with even bigger smile on their face. So this is like it's just really relaxing and happy. The other thing is that this is like community work. This is we always create communities. I think ever since I started traveling, teaching abroad, we've created our crochet gangs, as my t-shirt says, support your local gang. We build these everywhere. So the, f the women or the men gather together. We start doing some crafts together and uh, we all become friends together. Do you yeah. have these gangs in Finland also and a community here? Well, I, I, I ha it's been a long time. It's been so long since I've been teaching here. I actually have a, I have um, uh, I will be teaching workshops this fall, but it's not gonna be crochet. I'm gonna be teaching you <laughs> how to carve crochet hooks. So I'm actually looking forward to um, to uh, to to build the Finnish communities as well. I know that there are, but since I've been spending a lot of time abroad. My, my gang is like here and there. But the happy thing is that it's worldwide. Everybody, always, every country has a lot of crafters. All the countries, all the yarn shops, they sell hooks, they sell yarn. There is a request in Facebook that could yeah. you speak some Finnish, like full sentences. Definitely Maybe I can. Maybe tell your favorite place in a Finnish sentence and then translate it. Oh, right. Hmm, what's my favorite place? Minun lempikaupunkini on kurikka. Minun kotikaupunkini myös on kurikka. My favorite place and my hometown is kurikka. I think kurikka is actually a city nowadays. It's growing bigger and bigger. But when I lived in kurikka, when I, I was born there 40 years ago, um, there was only 9,000 people who lived there. 9,000! So it was a village. Nowadays kurikka has been growing, so there is more citizens. But kurikka on yhä minun lempipaikkani. I love the fields. Minä rakastan peltomaisemia, metsämaisemia, avaruutta, lakeutta, mäntyjä, koivuja. Yeah, so Pohjama is famous for the flatlands. I think it's called flatlands in, in English anyway. We have a lot of trees, fields. It's really flat, so you can see far. Does Kurikka inspire you the most? Or what is the most inspiring place in Finland? Well, Kurikka does inspire me, but I also there is also our national national um, park called Koli. Let me show you something. Koli is the um, Koli is one of the most famous places. I'll show you something. This is my brother, Basi. He's sitting in Koli. My brother, he is a, he is a yoga teacher and a father of four. He is my hero. So he was he, he made these kind of like um, yoga instructions for for my third book. And this is because I always try to combine well-being like in, in like to get well-being and harmonic harmonic life. Ha, ah, how should I explain that? Crafting is it's it creates happiness, but it kind of ruins your posture. <laughs> so what you do after you crochet too much and you feel like you're sitting like Quasimodo, then you need to do some yoga. So that's why we have the stretching instructions so that you can, you know, so your, your body and your mind both stay happy and in balance. <laughs> All right. So I think we were going a little bit forward. I don't know if we are even following the, following the, um, the so-called workshop anymore, but I, I wanted to show you how to make this kind of um, uh, this kind of stitch. If you can see, 
half of the work is full of these kinds of bubbles. So this is called popcorn, popcorn stitch. If you forget how to do it, just, just Google it and you'll find a lot of videos. So each and every one of these tahka patterns has one popcorn here, another popcorn there, another set of popcorns on top of them, on top of them, on top of them, and just one in the top. So this stitch is always made the same way. Basically, you collect five um, double stitches, viisi pylvästä, five is viisi, so you collect them all together, you start from the same same uh, place and you make. Now I've got number three going there, number four. So how you do the popcorn stitch is that you collect all of these five stitches together. You take the hook out of the work, put the hook through the first one and put the hook through the tiny loop you left there and just pull them together. So this creates a stitch called popcorn. There's a lot of different stitches in crochet worlds and uh, I, I don't even know half of them. I just use I just use double stitch. It's my favorite stitch. Like most of my works are made with the with the same stitch. It's easy. Um, where can can you find finished design? Where can you find it? Finished? And how would you descri describe finished design in general? Well, 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 well. There is like finished design. It's it's really varied. Mm. We have we have a lot of it. We are really famous for the uh, for the uh, design. Anyway, well, we are there. <laughs> so I think Finland is. If, well, we all know that finished design is really high quality. It's usually made out of some finished material, and the designers are usually really creative and practical. So I would describe finished design practical the most. It's always long lasting. So if you buy anything that comes from Finland, it will last uh, many lifetimes, I think. Otherwise, I uh, well, I do have some finished design here here in my studio as well. But um, I think you can find it everywhere. You just need to keep your eyes open and Google that. You are getting a lot of questions here. And oh, one yeah. is, for example, what is your favorite Finnish dessert? Oh, köyhät ritarit. That's what it is. The the poor knight. I think the the the, the literal translation would be the poor knight. It's it's like it's a dessert that is made of leftover things. So you cut like white bread, and you soak it in milk and and eggs, and you toast it. It's called French toast, is it? Well, anyway, then you put some self-made uh, strawberry jam on top of it. Some mascarpone cheese, maybe, or some like a huge pile of whipped cream. I think that's the best. We do have bulla as well. Bulla, the cinnamon rolls, the buns. We just ate them today. Hmm, they are good. Yesterday I baked uh, a pie for the for the for the filming crew here, and I've seen that somebody already tasted it. I hope they are still okay. But we do, we do a lot of baking here. Uh, I learned from my mother. She's a really heavy baker. She loves to do that. And everything she does has the... I always think that it's a taste of Finland when she puts a lot of butter, a lot of milk, a lot of sugar, a lot of eggs. And there we are. So, did we have any questions about crochet? I'm just like, my hands are working here, as you can see. But we can also we can also show some of, some more of the stitches. You you could also tell your favorite things about Finland. I could also do I could also do that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the nature. The nature is incredibly clean and green and thick. You can go to the woods and you can just get lost. You can just you can easily you can easily lose yourself for hours and hours and hours. But that's what we always do. If we have any free time, I think most of the Finns just like jump on their bicycles. Hopefully bicycles, I don't even have a driving license, but I, I bike a lot. So I take my bike, I put some coffee and some buns in my front basket and I cycle. I go to the woods and I can just sit there. I, can, I always do carry my yarns with me. And, and nowadays when we do a lot of like social media, I take some pictures for my Instagram because I always want to share my experiences with you. And uh, as, a, as a lonesome artist, I feel like 
that's the best way of connecting unless I'm unless I meet you like in real life somewhere in some country in some of my workshops if if that doesn't happen I love to meet you online so I, I post a lot of stuff on my Instagram and I try to I try to take uh, all my always like show the best parts best parts of everything but Finland is really really bright we have a lot of na nice nature places a lot of nice parks if you took a look at Miria's um, Miria's life just like half an hour ago she was in a forest and that forest is five minutes walk from this spot so we are basically in the nature all the time Helsinki, the capital is, it's really green. I think it's one of the greenest capitals ever. Like, if I, if I compare to, to, to the other capitals I've been visiting, we have so much green. And we have the sea as well. And that's nice. So, I'm, I'm just continuing the crochet and I'm, if you have any more questions, you can always send, you can send me questions. Oh, but there was something I wanted to show you. Um, yeah. There is, there's also one question. If you had to get one design item from Finland, what would it be? What would Only it be? Only one. This is a tough one, I know. That's so tough. I would just take like one of each. Is that possible? I don't know. Well, 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 well. Maybe um, three best. Ah, uh, this is even, even more difficult. I think I would just take... I would... I, I don't know. Give me five minutes. I'll continue some crochet. <laughs> it, so, I, well, when I, when I leave Finland, I usually travel for many months, at a, 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 like, I'm away for like half a year at a time. Uh, what I have in my... What I have in my luggage, well, Karelan piirakka, Karelan piirakka Karelian pie. This is not really design, but it's a Finnish thing. Um, so I take some of fun, some of Finnish delicacy. I take some of Finnish yarn. I always carry Finnish yarn with me, and then I usually have a Finnish knife. I have like, I have these kinds of like a survival package. That when I when I go to a new country to a new place, these are the finished things that I take with me, so I feel I feel like home. But I don't think none of those are like design design. Uh, if we talk about the the branding and stuff, but I just like the finished quality. I think we could talk more about that, like how long lasting, how durable everything is, as I think I think most of finished things are made to last. Hmm. Right. So we are continuing, but there, th I wanted to show you something and I really have to show this. So, so I've been writing books. I have, um, I have six books, there's six book on the, on the, in the making. And this one here on my work table is my book number three. I was thinking that I've never seen a crochet book that is made for guys and only for guys. So I took it as my as my um, my mission to make a super cool crochet book for guys. So I made, uh, it, first it was called Man Made, but the name is Crochetery. But there was something funny, there is like, I gathered all the guys that I know from my life to model for me. So there is, um, there's my dad. My dad is called Marti, and um, Marti is here. Give me a moment. Here! So this handsome dude here is my, my dad. He was modeling for the first time. I really, really, really had to sweet talk him like, come on, dad, come on. He was like, no, I don't want to do that. But then he took this, he took this sweater. I made this uh, like, a, like a really warm crocheted sweater for him, even though I have it here. And he just put it on and he was like, this feels so nice. He took an axe and he threw it on his shoulder and there he was. And I think this picture here is so Finnish. So Finnish. So nice. So nice. So, so, yeah, this is what I love to do. Absolutely. We have two minutes time. We have two minutes. After this, we're going to do some Instagram live. So you can also send me questions there. 
but can you notice how fast 45 minutes go? This is like when we have a workshop, I sometimes talk so much, I talk this 45 minutes and then I see that people, are, they already, we want to get to work. So maybe, I don't know, hopefully you got inspired. So what you can do, again, you can download the pattern from rentafin.com and uh, actually there, there's going to be a lot of more episodes. So if you keep on following Rentafin, next week you're going to be uh, meditating, going sailing with a fin. The week after you're going to be cooking with a fin. And uh, the following week you're going you're gonna to visit Matilda Dahl, a beautiful Finnish small town. So you can see everything from this country. So I would, I would, I would recommend you to follow Rentafin and just, you know, just see how, how this country looks like. For me, this is a happy place. It's really safe and I always, I feel, I feel like I'm in balance here, but traveling is also amazing. So it would be nice to see you wherever you are. We are gonna, we're gonna teach some workshops, craft, meet, create craft communities here and there. So maybe we'll someday we'll meet with you as well. Alrighty, are we out of time? We are out of time. Well, we could just do this again. I think we should do this again. So, so we will soon see an Instagram live and uh, we will be chatting some more there. So thank you for visiting my studio. You're always welcome back. All right, moikka.